Hey everyone, it's me, the Gills from your father figure, and welcome to Outriders. Um, Outriders is is a game that's coming out in April from People Can Fly, uh, and I got a chance to take a look at the demo recently. Uh, and I've spent about four, five hours playing it, and I wanted to get a, a nice little video together to collect my thoughts about everything and talk a little bit more about the game in its entirety and things that I would be I would consider to be concerns, things that I would consider to be uh, positives or celebratory aspects. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I've never done one of these before, so I'm really interested to see kind of where we go with it. Outriders itself is a three to four hour experience. Uh, at least the, the demo is from what we've seen. Uh, it was developed by People Can Fly, people, the same people behind uh, games like Bulletstorm, and it was published by Square Enix. Now, I want to go off a little bit on this because I played about three different sessions of the game. One was on our live stream at twitch.tv slash if you're interested. Uh, additionally, I had two sessions privately where I was playing both multiplayer and uh, single player. And throughout the course of the demo, I was playing one strict class. I could have tested the other classes out, but you know, I felt like it was important to get this out as soon as I could. And so I was playing the Devastator class, which felt more like a tanking class to me, which is something that I, I really enjoy in games like this, having a lot of defenses and, you know, being able to, to, to protect myself and my allies. So I want to go over a couple of points first. Uh, Outriders in itself is a looter shooter genre game. There are multitudes of enemies that you can fight in hopes that you get better gear, get better items. Uh, to upgrade, and then you collect skills and build your character out that way. Based on what I've played, you were able to get to a maximum level, I believe, seven and a world tier five. Now, what world tier is, just to give you guys some background, is it's how difficult your game is. You can you can scale it down, but you get lower rewards. Think of it similar to to Diablo's difficulty, where you can take it up as high as you want but you're going to be fighting harder enemies, but getting higher, higher tiered rewards, which is really nice. Um, and seeing that in the demo was, was a really good change of pace. I like that we were able to actually see a lot of different things coming from it. Um, but I want to, I want to start the actual, the actual talk with some things that I didn't really enjoy. One of which being the story. Now I am a huge fan of RPGs and ARPGs and science fiction and fantasy. I'm, I'm a huge nerd in all those aspects, but the one thing I can't stand is Outrider's story. It comes across like it's a poorly written fan fiction. A lot of the characters just feel dry. There's no, char there's no real character or personality to them. They rib you at every, every junction of the story. They make you feel like you're just another cog in the machine where uh, during, during the course of the story, we, we gain these powers and no one seems to give a shit at all. No one seems to actually care that you are super powered. But on the, on the opposite end of that, we meet these, these random NPCs in side quests that are hyper scared of us, but our allies don't seem to really care one way or the other. And that just doesn't make you feel important. Um, one one issue that I have with the story as well is the fact that all the antagonists just they don't have any real drive. I I I fought a bandit leader, I fought another altered, and it just felt like they were evil for the sake of being evil, right? It it, it felt like they were just another thing to to be pointed at and say, "Hey, go kill that thing," because they're bad and we are not. And that didn't feel good, especially in a demo where you're trying to showcase what your game is actually about. No one really knew what the story of Outriders was going to be going into this. We knew that, that it was going to be on, a, on a, a, a separate world, Enoch, a second Earth, essentially. But no one really knew what our place in the story was. We, we, we knew we were, oh, we're, we must be a colonist trying to colonize this place, but there's also bandits and all this other stuff and creatures. And I didn't really get that from the characters. We, we, we didn't really see that coming forward. And one of the issues that I have with 
with the story is it just felt like a hodgepodge of go here, fight these guys with no real correlation between our side quests and our main story and our characters. It just felt empty. It, it, it felt like there was nothing really going for us. Um, I felt like I was just playing, you know, Shooter Man McGunface, who, who, you know, has superpowers. That's it. Uh, now, one, one cool thing was I was sent to a tower uh, about a couple hours into the demo to go fight another altered, one of which who was actually terrorizing the local population with his electrifying powers. And they were talking about how, how he's this, this huge beacon of, of, you know, evil and you have to get rid of him because he's, he's killing people and he has the ability to fry anyone miles away from himself. And you're like, oh man, that is, that's really bad. That's going to be hurting this this colony that we have set up. We better go deal with it. And I and I was thinking to myself the entire time. I was like, finally, I get some aspect of story. We can find out their their reasoning, like what happened to them. Figure out anything about what's going on, uh, because usually in games like this, you have your your villain tell you, "Hey, here's I'm bad. I hate these people," and usually they'll you know go into some exposition or we'll get something from it, but. No, I get to the top of this tower and it's a guy with a gun, takes off a cloak, bam, combat starts. There's no talk, there's no nothing with him, no, no conversation, no banter, no maniacal laugh, and it just felt out of place. It felt like it was just another wall that I had to be up against. Granted, after the fact, uh, we were able to talk to uh, another altered, some hyper-powered altered that everyone's scared of, named Seth. I know, Seth. I'm terrified of people named Seth, too. But he was telling us that there are other altereds that we have to be afraid of, and one, one in particular that uh, not even he can kill or get rid of, and we have, to, we have to be the one to do it. And that kind of reinforces the fact that, yeah, we're, we're, we're supposed to be this huge strong altered someone who who can survive this 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 storm that normally disintegrates people but we go back to our allies and nothing you came from their side you got any intel for us are you fucking kidding me look they I treat us warned. like we're so garbage or you get back trash life. we're not important and as a player that's bad you, you don't want to make your player feel unimportant or unassuming, especially in a demo where you want to uplift them and make them feel special, right? What makes an altered special? Oh, we have superpowers. Oh, beyond that? No, you're just another garbage person. It's fine. It makes me really wonder why all the altereds change to being evil people in the first place, you know? With all the love and respect they're getting and, you know, mentorship, I guess. Um, well, let's move on to gameplay. Now, the gameplay itself, it plays very similarly to games like Destiny, uh, where, you know, it's a shooter, but what makes this interesting is that it's a third person shooter, uh, with l similar looting mechanics like Path of Exile, Diablo 3, uh, games like it. It's all kill people, take their stuff. Hope your numbers are higher than they were before, or you, you get a cool new ability, right? Um, when I was actually playing this, I felt like it followed through with this aspect pretty well uh, in the amount of time I spent. Again, only a few hours. But much like every other looter game out there, it, everything you do is subject to RNG. You could have nothing but common rarity gear drop for you for the first few hours, uh, you know, if your luck is anything like mine. But I feel that once you actually get that, that rare drop, or hell, even a legendary, it makes that experience that much richer. When I got my first rare, I got really excited because it was something special and unique to what I've experienced prior, considering most of the uncommon rarity stuff, or the greens, as most people refer to them, were just, hey, do more damage. That's it. No, no special abilities, no uh, higher magazine, it, size or you know have this special effect or this type of elemental damage so i was pleasantly surprised when the rares actually had something extra to bring to the table in my case it was an assault rifle 
that caused small localized explosions that were on a cooldown of roughly three to five seconds. But not only was it a regular explosion, like a, like a rocket or a grenade, it was blue and it had these really cool lighting effects and it made it feel more powerful. And I think that's a common issue with a lot of the weapons is that they all feel kind of the same until you find something of, of rare quality. There's no real difference between most of the weapons. If you showed me an SMG and an automatic shotgun, each with the same damage output, I would tell you that there's no real reason to pick one over the other. They deal, they do basically the same thing. There's no stagger from a shotgun. There's, there's no real benefit to using one over the other. It all comes down to, to personal taste. And, this, and especially, you kind of expect that kind of stuff in the game that boasts high, high science fantasy in this environment. And it, it sucks to not have that. But the rares, ooh, they feel good. They feel different from their impact to having special passive effects. They really change the way that you're, you're meant to play the game. Um, not to mention that when you actually get a legendary, it, it changes the game again. 100%. Now, during my, my few hours of playing, I was lucky enough to get a legendary assault rifle, uh, which not only had an interesting uh, visual design, but also had not, not one, but two unique effects that I'm, I hadn't seen before, not even on like enemy weapons or bosses. One of which was calling down lightning on my foes every couple of seconds while I was shooting, and the second was a healing effect that actually restored 30% of the damage dealt back into my hit point pool. That not only let me stay in fights longer, but it really felt like I had a true powerhouse of a weapon in my hands. I have to say, I found myself wishing I had found this earlier on in my playthrough, as there were a few bosses that I feel it really would have been a welcome addition. But let's, let's talk about a couple of the negatives during the game. I don't want to just get hyped up and talk about all the great stuff and lead you all astray. Let's talk about what wasn't so great. The game's faulty in its design, bare bones. Ranging from the UI feeling sticky, you had to click things multiple times to have it to fall through your inputs, waiting for your inputs, or even just navigating menus to figure out where I wanted to go. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle. However, I would endure that a hundred times over if it meant that I could forgo the constant disconnects, the crashes, the freezes, the dumps to desktop. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's... Uh-oh. Oh! I hit escape in a menu. That's not good. Uh, I don't also don't know if you noticed this, but you can't turn off the motion blur in this game, and uh, it's it's very oh, bad. Oh, no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sickening. I crashed, by the way. Now, I'm not running the game on top-of-the-line hardware, um, but then again, my stuff isn't trash either. Uh, I'm running on a recent Gen i5 processor. I've got a couple SSDs in my rig, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 1066 gig. I can run most things on, on higher graphical settings while both streaming and recording using another uh, desktop to capture video, but I was getting crash after crash after crash. Now, the first time I encountered some of these were during my multiplayer session with a friend of mine while we were live streaming. We'd been playing around with some network issues earlier the day, uh, but it's day one of the demo. I kind of expected as much. Uh, a lot of people were getting were unable to authenticate against the game server, but what are you going to do? It's day one. It was hour one. We expected issues. Every online game has these on day one. It's just to be expected. But after that, we were getting crashes on menu opens, menu closes, trying to assign powers, trying to open my map, trying to change gear, which I thought was alarming. So I did the usual troubleshooting. I rebooted my, my computer. I verified my software through Steam. I made sure that I was reading error messages to see where they were coming from. But it was only apparent to me after the fact when we switched our multiplayer host. Uh, originally, it was me, and then we switched to him much later on that I was no longer getting those crashes. He was. 
he was getting kicked out. He was he was crashing to uh, to desktop. And taking a look at it, we found out that we were actually getting network specific errors. And it was sourcing the service itself, which was strange. In a game that seems rooted around drop in, drop out co op, you would think this would have been ironed out prior to the demo's release. But that's not where these crashes ended. Now, I did mention that I did play this a little bit of single player to, to see if, if the two experiences differed. Unfortunately, somehow my crashes, my bugs increased on my second and third sessions. From opening my inventory to trying to select a new mission, I'd be met with freezing and then dumped to desktop. After reporting my exact issue in their crash reporter, I'd try again. And I kid you not, I was recording some of this B-roll for this exact video and I found myself getting upwards of 10 crashes in roughly 15 minutes of playtime. And it was every time trying to use my menu in some way or another. With a game that's coming out in a little over a month, this feels a little bit ridiculous. This isn't an alpha test. It's a full-fledged demo with a slew of issues. And if social media is to be believed, it's not just the PC users. It's console both old and new that are suffering from these issues. And while it's entirely true that it could be localized to my machine and fixed with a few content patches, releasing in this state would more than likely act as a detriment to the game's launch. Overall, I really enjoyed what, what I saw, and I see a lot of promise in the game with some glaring issues at the forefront of my mind. If we get these fixed prior to release, I could see a hefty contender from People Can Fly. But if they release as is, I think we're on route to another title with promise being left in the gutter. So let's go over a few points. The story. Overall, it's got lackluster writing, forgettable characters, and not and non-linear storytelling. I'd have to give it a solid 4 out of 10. Gameplay? I actually loved playing the game when it would function, and I found myself getting more and more excited over new powers and upgrades and playing with friends. I think with a little polish and maybe some better functioning AI, this could really carry the title to greatness. Easy 8 out of 10 for me. So, is this game for you? Should you invest in this game? Should you spend your $60 equivalent on the title? In its current state, it's really hard to say. With the limited exposure to the game that we've been given and the constant game-breaking bugs, I'd really have to say no. It feels like the game overall lacks the polish for a title with such a high price point, but if we get some severe fixes to crashes and bugs, I could see it warranting the price. But with release only being in a, in a month, only time's going to tell. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Let me know what you thought about this. Are you, are you guys excited for our writers? Do you think that these issues are going to be fixed in the future? Let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you like it. Consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, if I don't see you, I'll see you later.